Okay, so the part two is here, 10, 13 in the morning, the 23rd of September, 2023. Shit, how the hell am I supposed to be able to continue that one after I did the first video on this one just a few seconds ago? Because I was trying to make, trying not to screw up the memory storage of my computer here as I'm doing these files. It was never easy for my family to deal with death. It was never easy for them to talk about death in the first place. I mean, we talked about it in the past tense, but did we ever actually open up our hearts to each other about these things? Did we actually ever cry with each other? The last time I did was with my brother, and we cried while we were looking through a storage box that had special stuff that Ma saved, including a special letter. I thought said about it in the other video. And uh, my brother and I cried over Ma on that one. We went over to a meeting hall and we cried on that one too. And we cried with other people. It got to the point where we just got ourselves numbed. We numbed ourselves emotionally. We didn't want to deal with the pain, but I did videos on it and it damn near destroyed my brother. I did one for Ma. And I was listening to this song over and over again until it made me sick and ill in, my, in, in me and I couldn't deal with it anymore. I still can't see the video. I made this beautiful thing and I still can't see it. It's a tribute to my mother and also I overdid it with Jerry Reed and a few other songs to commemorate my brother's life. And it hurt like hell. And it hurt like hell. To this day, I can't see them. I may have put them out there, and they're buried alive in the in the videos. I don't even know where the hell they are. I don't know where the hell they are on YouTube. And it's hard. I don't think there's any other easier, softer euphemism to say it. It's hard as hell. I can never sit through I can never sit through a memorial service. No matter who's doing it, no matter who who is it, it just And the way I'm doing a memorial service for my own family through that way and I'm not ready to give them up just yet. A living zombie like memorial service. Um a living memorial, they call it. You live. You don't... But how many videos has I, have I done that memorialized my family over and over again? I don't know how to explain it to my families. I don't know how to explain it to the blood kin if they actually give a shit. I don't know how to explain it to the so-called theoretical friends out there. In order to be a friend, you got to. In order to have a friend, you got to be a friend. You got to have the opportunity for that, don't you? If you're not given the opportunity, then what the hell are you doing? There's also a lot of hidden anger. There's a lot of hidden anger concerning it. The, the, the memorial service is going to be starting up at 11 o'clock in the morning. They're going to be doing it on Zoom. And I can't even deal with it. Not because how much it, it reminds me too much of dealing with Ma and Dave and everybody else I lost. But also of the living that didn't even bother to check up on me when I needed to help the most. And kept screaming for it, but nothing happened. And a few other people that actually did, I mean, they're actually gone. I mean, physically relocated, moved out, moved away. So, yeah, and dealing with grieving is also dealing with anger. Anger of people leaving, that you wanted to stay in your life for stability. Obviously, go out there and find new people. 
Who? Where? How? I'm afraid of getting my back stabbed. I had that a few times. I'm not willing to go through that again. I've had leeches, and I'm not dealing with that one either. See, that makes me overprotective and more angry and more pissed off at the world or anybody else for that matter. I may laugh, I may joke, and I look at them and say, okay, where's the hand? Where's the dagger in the hand? They were so-called friends. Caesar was stabbed by his closest friends. Doesn't matter what the reason was, he was, he was stabbed in the back. And I'm not willing to go through that again. I'm not willing to do that. Probably say it was, you're angry because your family's gone. At times I keep thinking back on that one, yeah, and here's the thing, I have to keep going further into it. And there was not a damn thing I could do about it for my mother or my brother. Not a damn thing. Ma was dying inside. There was not a damn thing I could do about it. Her emotions were killing her. It just laid her ass out like crazy. She couldn't talk about it. She didn't want to talk about it. Committed a slow suicide on that one. Gave up because a lot of people she cared about were gone. Except for the two boys of hers. She figured we survived, we'd live on, and we barely did. Well, she was gone, I had to deal with David and his, in our situation. And I had to deal with his issues and the leeches he, he had gotten attached to. And that was a pain in the ass right there. Once in a great while, I'll get a radar blip on that one, on a leech. I don't want to have anything to deal with it, ever. Not even family. She tried to be. But, uh, you don't screw it around. I don't like getting backstabbed. I have a problem with that. And the problem is, somebody's going to tell me that, well, Johnny, I'm your sister. Doesn't matter. You got yourself in a situation I couldn't even get yourself out of. There's no way in hell I could, but you want me to do everything else I could. Damn near kill myself just to get you out of there, and I don't even know how to do that. Now, how to, how would I do that? Put yourself in a geographic that I can't get you out of. No funding to get myself going to get you out of there. Nope. <sighs> oh, no way. Some things you can't do. If there was, didn't happen. So, yeah, I got pissed off at one. Could I get pissed off at my brother? Seriously? Could I really get pissed off at him? For putting me through that kind of damn crap? I could. Maybe I should have. And be constantly angry about it all the damn time. His brother had to clean up the mess. He'd, he left. Still do. Do you think with my own mess I still have to get cleaned up on? Yeah, I can hate my brother. I can go crazy on that one. I mean, it's far easier to do that. And have that be a constant source right there. Question, is it worth it? 
No. See, I'm dealing with a situation that goes beyond what I can deal with. I could be angry at my brother at a lot of things at this point over here. Hell, I can be angry at a dime when he damn near killed me in a car accident. He told me he didn't need for me to wear seatbelts, and I wore seatbelts to save my ass, barely, but it saved my ass. I wrecked a family car in the process, and he just got his license as a kid. Didn't know his ass from... Didn't know what the fuck he was doing. My ma had to take care of the, la the ladies at home, an elderly aunt and a grandmother. And Dave and I were out there getting the rest of the stuff, moved down from one house to another. Lost control of a car, spun, hit a pole. I thought it was a tree, but it hit something. Big, round, and tall. I barely remember what the hell happened to that. My brother was telling me what happened, but I barely remembered for myself. I said a shock. I remember coming to barely conscious in an ambulance and throwing, throwing up all over the damn place. God, what a mess. Passing out, waking up in another emergency room, and then bleh, there he goes again. I thought I got rid of the damn donuts once. No, I had some extra left in the in the in the stomach. So bleh, there he goes. Wake up in another hospital. Nurse, I threw up again. <laughs> yeah. I was great when my brother got my my ass out of there alive. To this day, I'm so grateful. He kept telling me things not to do, and I did them anyway, and he got the blame for it. And I get the pain for it. Only because I was a young and stupid kid during those days. And as an adult, different story altogether. We watched each other's back. We watched each other's six. And we took care of each other, and we took care of Mom. And after she gone, we had to take care of each other more and more. And the thing is, I wouldn't... I wouldn't blame her for all the shit. Maybe a lot of, little bit. I'd do it all over again, though. Most of it, anyway. Most of it. But hate him? I love the big son of a bitch. I love my mother. It isn't easy losing people. A memorial service today for a mother. It's helpful when you have people who actually care about you, help trying to walk you through the pain, especially when they know that person. But here's the thing, you got to keep acknowledging that you got the pain. You can't just say, I'm all right all the time. Maybe some days you'd be fine. You can lie to yourself, but you can't lie to this. I can't lie to myself. I'm emotionally screwed up. I'm broken. I've been broken for a long while, and I don't even know what being healed is all about. But all I know is I keep putting myself together with duct tape, chewing gum, spit, spit, Bailing wire, crazy glue, whatever it is, that puts me back together again. The thing is, I don't go for the drugs, and I sure as hell don't go for the alcohol. I also can't hide the truth, and I also can't hide the pain from me either. Because that in itself is lying to myself in a mission, and I won't do that to myself. But unfortunately, I do that sometimes because I'm too damn used to it. Getting past all that pain in, in my youth and then throughout my adult life until I lost Ma. I had to keep denying the pain because I had to keep showing how strong I was to deal with life and everything else. I kept lying to others and lying to myself. 
and then Ma died, and it was hard to sell to lean on my brother a lot more, and he was leaning on me a lot as well. He couldn't deal with it. He didn't want to deal with it. He couldn't face it. He couldn't cope with it. But he wasn't drinking, and he wasn't using over the damn thing either. He wasn't. So in a sense, we became our own sponsors of a sort. Our own checks and balances. And there had been a lot of things that could have put David over the edge, and probably damn near did. I know that the medications he was taking weren't helping him as much. He had medications to deal with his own PTSD issues. And he had to keep getting different dosages and different medications in order to deal with it. And see my brother go through the flashbacks of what he had gone through in the military. But I was wondering if he actually had flashbacks concerning about what he had to deal with concerning about death in the family, including the people he lost. When we uh, were going through the transition right after Ma and lived in a trailer home for about a year and a half before we got evicted out of the damn thing. Long story on that one. Another video for that one, I guess, somewhere. In the process, he was also losing his biological father that he'd gotten closer and closer to. He lived in Texas with a large family out there. I don't even know where the hell they are, to tell you the truth, in Texas. I don't. I got a little way of trying to find out. And... His father had a slip and fall, went into a coma, and never recovered. There was other people in his, other people out there who were making the decisions about the father's health. There should have been the sister, the, the biological sister, the head of the family, making that kind of call. And she was depending more and more on my, bro my brother's strength to deal with that. Patsy Jean. And she was close to my brother. Just as close as she was to me. Only I never met her in my life. I wish I had. I would have given her a hell of a brotherly hug. I hope she's all right. I haven't heard from her in a hell of a long while. She hasn't heard from me in a hell of a long while. Nice way for family to keep in track with each other, I'll tell you that much. She's nowhere near blood related, but in a way she is related. She was my brother's sister. Two different fathers, one mother. Long story on that one. There ought to be videos on this one. <laughs> Suffice it to say, my brother's bio adopted me of sorts. I grasped this before he passed. Before he had his. And this happened before he had to slip and fall and in the month we were about to get evicted out of the out of the trailer home. The father passes away out in Texas. Nothing my brother could do about it. He couldn't even mourn him because we were in survival mode at that point. We were in a struggle to live. He couldn't take the time necessary to mourn. To really cry, to really break down. He had to hold it together. You talk about holding on to medications left and right just to keep yourself sane. He couldn't even talk to me, his big brother, about it. <laughs> his baby brother about it. I guess in a way I became his big brother. I did a lot of things for my brother, including doing a lot of running around for him. I wish I had all the stories taped that he was telling me. I didn't. I remember some of the stories that he actually gone through shit in the military. And what happened when he was a, long, when he was a long, uh, younger kid, a teenager, dealing with uh, his stepbrothers and his father and his grandparents, God rest his soul, and their pet bull. They said it was delicious.
Here's one thing that got to me. Yesterday I was going through a map. Map of UCLA. I was on a hunt for a teddy bear. I liked the teddy bear that they had. I liked the teddy bear I got from my community college. It looked a lot better anyway. still does. He's buried in her somewhere. At least one or two of them anyway. So you can probably see him. And I looked at the map. My brother went to UCLA, but not as a student, but as a patient. There was a place out there that was going to help him out with his emotional situations when he was a younger kid. And I was barely maybe one or two. And I didn't know what that was going on. But my brother, he had to be you know, hospitalized of sorts. And had to be taken care of for a time until he became outpatient. And Ma had to go to outpatient classes with him just to reorient, reorientate and educate him. Or re-educate him a bit. But looking at that campus... My brother and I went to a few book fairs over there, over at UCLA. Saw Royce Hall a couple of times. The LA Times was running the book fairs when my brother and I went over there. Almost about 30 years ago. And we walked on the campus, up and down. My brother even had a scooter. Borrowed my mama's scooter. Going up and down the place. I wanted to check out the books. I wanted to check out the authors. I wanted to hear stuff. I mean, I wanted to be in the realm of the literary. A realm I thought I was going to be part of and didn't feel like I was alienated afterwards. But going up and down in that place and then going through the student store and seeing what they had, we both bought it, bought some UCLA junk. <laughs> Lost it, though. A while ago. I have the memories. And looking at the map, it brings back the memories. But it also brings back the feelings that I actually had of my brother meeting his his friend. This guy's name was Pincus. I suppose they're both having a good old time over this. And they were talking about it a great deal. So I met David's friend Pincus, an adult, who was helping my brother out through his situation over at UCLA. And when I kept seeing the picture, when I kept seeing the image of the UCLA, the map of it, on Google Maps, just, it was tearing me apart because I was seeing my brother. I was seeing my brother. I was seeing that part of him that I remembered more and more of. Not the figure that he came out of the military and became someone else that I didn't recognize. But prior to that. You see on these videos I can also do a memorial. I can also memorialize my family a great deal more. I just can't stand anyone else's because it hurts too damn badly. But I know how it feels for the other person. If they had been that close to the families, that they had been that close to the people that they cared about, then I know truly the pain that they're going through. I understand that feeling. I understand the emptiness. The loss. 
how they're supposed to be going through it and how they're supposed to deal and, and cope with everything else. It's never easy talking about this. It's never easy talking about anything regarding death or life or memories or anything else like that because it's triggers. At least I know for me it is. But I have to talk about them. I have to get them recorded. I have to put them on tape. I have to put them on digital. I have to get it out. Is it all right for others? I don't care. I'm doing it for me. I am doing this that helps me. Because in a way, I don't want to end up like my mother and my brother. I don't want to be buried alive with the grief. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm getting buried alive. But at least I'm trying to talk about it. I'm trying to talk about the pitfalls, what I'm going through, what I've experienced, what I've learned about, what I've seen my mother and my brother go through. <laughs> my mother had been on antidepressants for a long time after Grandma's death. And sometimes she had to change those medications. And off the medications for about a week, she'd go psychotic. Scared the hell out of me. I've kept telling myself, I am not going to get hooked up on the medications like every, like every other doctor would have it, people go through. No, I'm not dealing with it. No. My body's going to be deteriorating, so is my brain, but I assure you, I ain't going to be addicted to those damn things. No. I'll fight. I'll be pissy about it, but I'll fight. Maybe in order to help stave off my body before it passes away, but... I'm not looking forward to dying. It scares the hell out of me. I've been there, done that, and I know it's permanent. Because the next time I go, I'm not coming back. But if I do come back, it's going to be a harder struggle trying to live throughout the rest of my existence, no matter how short it is. I'll probably be screaming and yelling, I still wanted to go back and be with my family. That's going to be the hardest damn thing. You know, I get it. That level, that intensity, that connection to it. People have killed to get into that connection. People have literally killed themselves to get into it. Or wanted to kill others just to get into that thing. They want people to explain it to them. There's no explanation. I mean, once you get hooked in that kind of connection... Sometimes you feel it, sometimes a whisper, it, and other times it's a full rush. And as a four-year-old during those days, I wanted to, I wanted to be there. I didn't want to deal with life. I was home, I was safe, and I was here after that. And I had to make do, and I had to deal with life. I had to deal with life's lessons, whatever the hell it was. If any, how to deal, how to cope, how to work, how to function, how to cover up your emotions like crazy so you don't turn yourself into a, or a basket case. These days, I don't care about turning into a basket case. I already am one. I acknowledge it. I accept it. I welcome it. I'm a full man idiot. Deal with it. But other people can't. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to deal with the pain. They don't want to deal with the loss. Some actually drive themselves into the point of no return. And at times I've been tempted. But I'm here. I'm not ready to go yet. Even though I yearn and I long to have my brother hug me again and Ma to hug me again. A physical, brutal squeezing of the lungs of a bear hug. Knowing that could be my brother squeezing the living crap out of me, telling me he loved me so much.
And yes, that hurts. It's supposed to hurt. There isn't supposed to be an easy way of dealing with mourning and grieving. It isn't, there isn't a way of dealing with death on better terms. You have to deal with it on its own terms. I keep learning this the hard way. And yeah, there's days I wanted to kill myself and just go. I can't deal with memorials because I'm already reminded too much. And I don't know how to deal with this one. I don't know how to tell my friend. I'm already living through a memorial right now as it is. And every single day, every single moment for the rest of my existence on this earth, I'm going to be going through that roller coaster left and right. I can't hide from it. I can't pretend. I have to let it roll. And some days it will put me into a bed and keep me there for hours on end. And other days I can get up and deal and function as a human being. I've accepted this. I don't like it, but I've accepted it anyway. It's life on life's terms. See, I don't have the people around me to walk me through this shit. I deal with it on my own. I'm not saying with pride or ego at this point, even though it may sound like it. Like, I can handle this damn shit. I'm not handling it. I'm surviving it. I'm fighting for survival, my sanity. My mind, my heart, my soul, my memories. I'm not living my life on somebody else's terms. I'm living on borrowed time. And sometimes I can't squeeze it all in. Other times I'm just going to have to let things go as they are and deal with the consequences. If I could struggle like crazy, I could. I would. And right now, I am feeling too much of it. But I'm going to get back into it. I know I am. But I just can't deal with the memorial service today. I'm sorry, Paula. You loved your mother probably as much as I loved my family. With everything and anything. I wish I could be there for you. I wish I could give you a bear hug and give Renee a bear hug. I wish I could do that to you. Squeeze the living life out of you, or almost. Because I know, I know too damn much. And I can't deal. I'm sorry. <laughs>